This is fun. This is motoring. This is an experience. I have driven some of the fastest cars in the world. I've gone over 220 miles an hour in race cars. This is one of the slowest I've ever driven, and yet, by far, it is the most fun. If you want to get to the root of why people love cars, what modern day sports cars try to harken back to, what we all dream and idolize as what we're going to do when we get in a cool sports car on a fall day and go for a drive, then you get in one of these. A Jaguar XK120 is perfection, motoring perfection. If you want to add a little bit of celebrity to these cars, just know that back in the day, this is what famous actors drove. This was the Bugatti Veyron of that time. Jay Leno will tell you that this was the car that made him fall in love with cars. He saw one of these as a nine-year-old boy, got to sit in it, fell in love with it, became the first car he bought, a Jaguar XK120. There's just a huge wheel in front of my face. The pedals sort of react to my inputs. The shifter is, is almost a toy shifter. I feel like I'm, I'm on a play set. <laughs> None of it feels like real life. I'm so exposed to the elements. I'm so low. I can put my arm out and touch the ground. I can drive with no hands. This is ridiculous. Don't try this at home. It's horribly unsafe. But that's, that's the feeling. Now we can talk specs, right? That it has an inline six dual overhead cams, 160 horsepower. And what does that mean speed wise? Zero to 60 in 10 seconds. But I'm telling you, when you hit the accelerator in this thing and you start to traject forward at the rate it does, that does not feel slow. It feels like I'm going a thousand. And that is the fun. I am driving around Road America, one of the most historic racetracks in all of the world and especially in North America. I feel like I'm at the dawn of sports car racing in America. That a young Roger Penske is gonna walk up and say, hey son, you know how to drive. <laughs> Briggs Cunningham is gonna give me a call and say, hey, I want you to come join our team for the Le Mans 24 hour. I've just stepped back in time. I'm sure if I was going out of pit lane here at Road America in 1952 and was told, all right, go sit it on the pole, that would have been terrifying. The steering is somewhat detached from the front tires. When you go off into a corner and start hitting the brakes, it's sort of a pump, another pump, and then you're sort of like, all right, it's now got the idea that I want to slow down. I'm slowing down. Okay, I probably should just give up at slowing down and just roll a ton of speed to the apex. And then you'd have to do that lap after lap in a race. That would be terrifying. You'd be shivering beforehand. But when I get to just enjoy it, tooling around at low speed, so much fun. Now, if we're gonna talk numbers, there's really only two numbers that matter in this car if we wanna get into statistics. That is 132.596 and 120. The 132 is a reference to the record they set in a specially prepared one of these. That was the fastest the car had ever gone. The 120, well that's the XK120. That's because the production car could do 120 miles per hour. Now I've gone about 70. And I'm gonna do that right now. We're approaching 80. Eh, I don't wanna go any faster than that. No, I don't wanna go 120. I don't wanna go fast. That's not the point. I just want to tour around on a beautiful day in Road America in an old Jag. That's what I want to do. Obviously, I have fallen in love with this car. I want to buy one. Now, if I was going to buy one, this is what I should look for. And it starts with what you should look for in all old cars, rust. More specifically on this one, it's in the headlamps, in the door sills, 
and the wheel arches. Also look for wood rot. The doors are aluminum, but the frames are made of wood. So if the door doesn't fit right, that could be a sign. If you're gonna drive it frequently, then a wise investment would be getting an upgraded cooling system. Basically an aftermarket radiator and electric fan to keep you on the road instead of pulled off on the side of it. A must have when buying one of these is a heritage certificate, which shows you the original color combo, the options, but most of all just guarantees you're not buying a fake. And then lastly, one thing you might want to look into and if it comes with it is the original toolkit and jack because this can save you a long arduous hunt to the tune of $10,000 later on. Overall for a car almost 70 years old, this list is not as long as you'd expect. That is why I want one. These cars have remained popular due to their timeless looks and stout engine. If you wanted a 1952 XK120 SE in number two excellent condition, values hovered in the mid 120s. As of September 2020, values have risen to nearly $140,000. As always, values change over time, so please go to haggerty.com slash valuation tools for more up-to-date information. These videos are supposed to explain to you why you should pay attention to a car and then what to look for if you're gonna be a buyer for it. I am the buyer for this. You have a customer. I'm buying one of these.